Hello, hello, hello. And today I will be teaching you how to do a procedural camouflage pattern. Um, if you want the scale to work on other objects, you probably have to adjust some of the values I will give you. Um, these work pretty well for this cube, which is like 1.5 meters in length and diameter. And in the end, I will also give you the option to do edge wear for this. So if you want to put this on armored vehicles or something, you can put this. You can put this with edge wear, and I. You can also combine this pretty easy with like fabric or or something if you want this for a shirt or something. So yeah, let's get started with this. First of all, we're gonna need Musgrave textures for this. So I'm just gonna drag in a Musgrave texture. It's just set this to 4D, we will need this light and then just duplicate it three times because we will need three options for our first pattern. I will show you three patterns that you can use. You can also improvise more, but I will give you like kind of like a desert pattern, more like a mountain pattern and a very normal um, forest pattern. So yeah, let's then press Control T to bring up our texture coordinate and let us plug an object into every three of these. Okay, now we want to, here we want a scale of three. Bring the detail down to 1.5 and we can just do this for every one of these. We want the detail of 1.5 in every one. The dimension does not overly matter but we want it to be as light as possible so we're gonna, just going to put it to 15 and this is also again for all of them. So just Put in the dimension of 15 into all. And now we want the scale of the second one, of this one, to be 8. Uh, let's put it to 5. 5 is probably better. And the third one, we, we, we want the scale of 10. So we have like a gradual increase in scale. Okay, let's, uh, let's preview this and let's get, and let's put the second one to a w of 2 because of course what it does basically it moves the texture so we have less um, repetitions so here put in a 2 here and put in a 4 here if you don't like how it looks just move it around I just like to use 2 um, two and 4 and 0 because it's really easy to do and then we need color ramps we will put the color ramps here and here and just connect them and you will see why we'll need them in a second now select Select the first two, control zero to mix them, change the mix to lighten, and then bring the faculty down to 0 0.4. And now you can see why we need the color ramps because we want this to be to, uh, to not have soft edges. So let's drag this pretty close. So as close as, as, close as you can is the best cause. And now you can see why we want those different color values because if we combine them later we can give each one of the gray values a different color which is what we want right so then just select these two and we do the same again change mix to lighten and put this to 0.1 and now we can get our um, coloring color ramp into there so just bring, that, bring in another color ramp plug it here change this to constant and then our first one is going to be more of a brown value, something like this right here is, looks pretty cool. The second one goes to the position that we did, so 0 0.4. Change this to more of a green value, so something like this looks pretty cool. And then the, th and then the third one goes to 0 0.9, because we have a um, factor of 0 0.1 here. And this is going to be uh, kind of like some some beige green tone something like this so and now you can pl just plug this into the base color and we have a finished material we'll just put the reference up to 0 0.8 or 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 0 0.7 i like 0 0.8 but you can use whatever you want so and with that we have our first pattern finished which is honestly pretty simple and doesn't look as cool but it works it works for some things um let's just make a frame so that we can move it easier because we will be making three of those and those will be pretty big. So just, just select the frame and just move it a bit back. Oh yeah, yeah, no, let's move it up, let's move it up. Second one. 
another Musgrave texture. Duplicated, we need two of those. Control T, we need an, again the texture coordinate. Object into both vectors. And then set this scale to 5, which is fine. The detail we again want, uh, no, 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 sorry. Um, set the scale to 6.5, sorry, not 5. The detail this time we want a max detail, uh, but we want, want the dimension down to 0 0.5. This should look something like this, which will be a pretty nice basis, and we want this down to 1.2. So, so, so something like this looks looks pretty nice. Um, then we again want to change the second one to 4D. We can also change the first one to 4D, but we don't overly need that. You can still do it if you don't like how it looks. Um, the second one, we want a W value of 4, just to have like more difference, put the scale up to 6.5 as well. Um, detail, again, we will max, dimension goes to 0 0.6, and this goes down to 0 0.2. And now we're just gonna, again, mix them. So just... Mix them, again, change this to lighten, put this to 0 0.3, and then we will, again, need a color ramp in there where we can bring the two ends closer together. So just chup and chup. And now we can bring in our final coloring color ramp, and for this we want the first one to be a gray, or like a, like a blue-gray, so let's Put like Brugge into 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 here. This one needs to be really really close to this, so something around like here. That will be fully white as well. And the third one we will do. If I can find it, yeah, it's here. This will go to zero point seven, and this will be a green. Something like this. I like this. You can even make this a tiny bit darker, I feel like. Something like this was probably nice. And then we can preview how it looks, put it into here and preview it. Again, this is more of a mountain type theme. Um, you can use this wherever you want. So I'm just going to put it into a frame as well. And then we can get to the third one. The third one is, again, we need three Musgrave textures for this, so just Shift A, Musgrave texture, again, we want this to be 4D, and let's duplicate them again, 1, 2, 3, Control T, delete the mapping, object into vector, object into vector, object into vector. Okay, for this. This will be a bit higher scaled, so let's get a scale of like 13. A detail of 2, dimension of 2, and this goes down to 0 0.8. Sorry, 0 0.8. Let's preview it. Looks something like this. Um, this will move by 2 again. Scale goes up to a 15. Detail stay. Dimension stays. This again goes down to 0 0.8. And we will put this onto a vector of uh, what do we what do we want for this? Let's go four and then what scale do we want for this? I'm probably like twenty, right? Yeah, twenty is fine. Let's let's get twenty. It will stays and this again goes down to zero point eight. And now we get our color ramps again. Like I said, you just you just repeat this. It's pretty straightforward to do this. I'm just gonna show you three patterns so that you have some stuff to work with. And again, drag this close, drag this close, drag this close. Mix the first two, change the light, 0 0.4, preview it, looks pretty cool. Make it for the second one as well. One mix and change this to lighten, and then just bring in a color ramp here. 
And this time we will do like a a sand one. So sorry, I have this on zero point five, and this we have on zero point eight. Um, and now and now we do we will do like a sand one. So what we'll have here is we have a brown to start with. So let's just get like brown, something like this, maybe a bit brighter, or something like this is fine. Then we have a brighter brown, so something like this. This, something like this is fine. Then we have then we have a darker brown, right? Which should start at like zero point five exactly. Again, change this to constant. Sorry, I forgot to do, I forgot to I forgot to do that. And then we have a then we have a last one which is back here, which is zero point nine. And this one as well should be uh I don't know, I we I think we could even make this like something like this. Maybe a bit too much. I feel like this, I feel like. And and again, this is like a very small did and then I also forget to switch this to constant. Didn't change much. But uh, yeah, this is also again like a this is more like a like a desert one. But yeah, what what you're here for is not this. You are here for the edgeware, which is what we will get to, because this is kind of a bit more tricky. Um, I have shown how to do this before. I'm just gonna use um this one as an example now. Um, basically, what you do is you get two bevel nodes, place them somewhere where it's safe, so something around here, on over right like here, duplicate them. You need two. One with a radius of zero and like eight, and some with a radius of like zero point four, uh, let, let's say zero point six even, and then two samples, and then you just c control zero them, and let's preview it because then you see what it does. And if we change this to difference uh, now, and plug this fully up, you have like this beautiful mask, which is what we will use to get an edge to get like an an edge wear effect. Now we just need to multiply this with things. And for this, I'm going to start off with a Musgrave. Because cause I like uh, Musgrave textures. Size easily a 70. You need a very, very big big thing for this, because you obviously have a big object. And you don't want repetitions. Max up the detail. Dimension goes down to zero, because you want like very, very tiny things. And this goes down to uh, honestly I kinda want this one point two is cool. One point two gives us a great thing. Um and then we obviously need something to multiply it with. So now we can just take these two um d put this into the faculty. Uh, into the in the factor. Uh, change the color to black here, and now you can change this to lighten. Now what you have is this beautiful edgeware, which still looks a bit clunky. So what we can do with this is we can multiply other other things into it. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna make a noise texture, and then I'm just gonna multiply that into there. Let's get a noise texture scale of fifty. Um, the max of the detail, obviously, the roughness 0 0.65, so we have it a bit more rough. Distortion 0.7, so that we get like nice, cool edges. And then we're just gonna select both, and again, in the, into the factor, re um, black, and this to lighten. And now we get a color ramp into here, and with the color ramp, we can control how much. Want to v want to vanish and what we want to see. Well, this is kind of like a balancing act now. How much edge where you want. Looks like this is still too too much. Something like this. I feel like it looks kind of cool. It's still for me, honestly. I feel like this is still not fine enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate the noise texture. Let's just bring this up a bit. 
just duplicate the noise texture. I'm going to put this here. That's going to plug this into this again. And what I'm not going to do is I'm just going to reduce the scale to like, I don't know. Yeah, I like a five. A five looks pretty cool. I just want like bigger things into here. Something like this. Or maybe like this. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I like this. And then, then just again change this to lighten. This goes here, this goes here, this goes to black. Maybe this that's maybe even a bit too much. So if we just take some chunks out of there. Maybe even scale a bit lower. Yeah, this is kind of cool. I like this. This looks like a kind of cool edge bevel. You can also just replace everything I did here, like in the bottom part, with an texture, just with an image texture of your of your of your choosing, which works equally as good. But I just like to work procedurally. Now, in the lighten, we want a color ramp because we want to maximize the contrast here. So just maximize the contrast. Why you you will see in a second why why it's important, because now obviously. Well, um, this obviously only works if you ha have it on a mat on a metal material. What well, what I'm gonna do in a second, on like a metal structure, kind of like a tank or something. But you can easily adjust this so that this works as well on like a shirt or something. You just have to unplug it from the metallic. But it w it it should work the same way. I don't know if like this kind of edge bevel would look cool there, but I, I guess you can try that. So now we need to multiply this into this, or in my case, this into this, because I think this looks generally better. So I'll just select this here. This stays in, this goes into the top, and this goes into the factor, and this goes obviously to full white. And now, now you, you can see we have our little edge wear here, which looks kind of cool to be honest. Um. We can now plug this into the base color because th cause this is where it wants to go. And we can just straight up take this and plug this into the metallic. And we can preview it. And you can see we have like these little metal things coming up from there now. Um, obviously, this isn't done because we still have our roughness and our metal doesn't want to be rough. So we're just going to make a color ramp. Put it here, reverse it. Get this up to get this pretty close up to like here and make it like gray. Put it into this and then get this and plug it here. And now you should have these parts which are very very shiny, and you should have the uh, the other parts which are not shiny. I'm probably just gonna this down a tiny bit. So something like this probably is gonna is pretty nice. You, you now have these shiny bits. Should reflect. And you have the other bits which are not reflecting. So yeah. Um, the final step what we will do is we will put this all into a bump node. So just get a bump. Plug it into the normal. Get again this. Plug it into the height. And you should have Pretty nice bumps, which go into the into the, into the the material. You can even put this higher. You can even put this to like a five or something. If you like really want deep scratches, but I like it. But I I like it at one. So yeah, here's your fully procedural edge wear material with uh edge wear material um camo material which with edge wear. I hope I could teach you some stuff. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.